Good morning and welcome to the Charles Enthusiast Show, brought to you by Wider for Bush, live on Facebook and also YTV. My name's Anton Persky. I'm joined here with Mark Childs. Childsy, all the club rugby, they have a week off this week, and that's pretty helpful for both Ekinahuna and Greytown, considering next week they go into the Lane Pen Cup final, right? I think so, yeah. Pretty well for the amount of bodies that are at club rugby at the moment, not only for those two sides, more than everybody, uh, but for all the other club rugby teams in the competition, it's a, it's a week off to recharge the bodies and... Um, yeah, all teams will be going hell for Lero next week. But excited about this weekend on Monday with uh, Farrier's Wider Upper Bush State Hawks Bay. Yes, uh, Wider Upper Bush versus Hawks Bay at uh, Trust House Memorial Park, and that's at 2 p.m. on Monday. So get down there and support Wider Upper Bush. Uh, we also have Mark Regini on the show, Wider Upper Bush uh, coach, uh, and also our undercover uh, field agent, Chris Cogdale, and we'll be crossing over to them shortly to have chat. Uh, but Charlesy, Rich. This week we've uh, we've gone through the archives and we've uh, our under our, our field agent, our field journalist uh, Tim Richardson has dug out some really good information for us, and we're going to talk about a game that was played with uh, Wairarapa and Hawke's Bay way back in 1927, which was the Ranfley Shield game, which was played at Solway Showgrounds, and it was labelled in the media as the Battle of Solway. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? I can, yeah. The Battle of Solway is a famous rugby match made at the Solway Showgrounds in 1927. The uh, Wadanapa team won the Ramfilly Shield prior and beat Hawke's Bay, who had a massive hold of that shield for many years after George Nipia playing in that Hawke's Bay side. Wadanapa won the shield, and this was one of the defenders uh, back then in 1927. King George V was the king. It was played on King's birthday weekend. It was the King's birthday match. And the funny thing is, this game this weekend is on Queen's birthday weekend. It is. And it's a very famous and well-documented game of rugby. There were something like 10,000 people at the ground, at Solway Programs. There were 1,000 cars that travelled from Hawke's Bay to Masterton. 1,000 vehicles travelled from Hawke's Bay over a dirt track. It took them seven hours to get here. It there was also special trains put on from Wellington it was. into the Wairapa. There was. And over 10,000 people attended this game at Solway Showgrounds. There was. And, and the game itself um, was was probably pumped up in the media as the Battle of Solway. And it was, it was a bit of false. Uh, well, well, a bit of fake news. A bit of fake news about how actually good the game was um, as we've researched. But, but what happened was the crowd got a little bit intoxicated because it was, it was alcohol being served. And um, the actual grand, the actual shed where a lot of the spectators were being housed in actually collapsed that day. So there was a lot of things going on off the field. There were two pitch invasions at the game. Uh, it was mayhem apparently there in 1927. Now, Hawks Bay won that game 21 points to 10. However, the, so they retained the Ranfley Shield. Well, no, they won the Shield back. Well, they won the Shield back, so yeah, that's right. And however, it got taken off them because a player called uh, Wattie... Barclay wasn't registered to play for Hawks Bay at the time. Correct. There was a protest and the shield got taken off them to the furor of the Hawks Bay Union, uh, who also had beef with White Rapper at the time because a very famous All Black called Bert Cook, who played uh, 44 matches for the All Blacks and scored 39 tries. He was a diminutive winger. He only weighed 62 kilograms, but he was playing for White Rapper. He transferred to play for White Rapper. Then he played for the Masterton Club at the time he was playing and Hawks Bay were all really pissed off about that. So, <laughs> so then they got the shield taken off them. It was a, it was a famous game uh, and we recommend you look it up. Absolutely um, epic. Now, someone else that I know uh, who knows a lot more about this game than me, and he was actually here in 1927. I'm going to cross over to Chris He's going to tell us a little bit about what he saw at the game. Yeah, nothing at all because I wasn't there, boys. But I can tell you uh, it was an intrigue in this is that the um, uh, – both teams were refereed, uh, sorry, by coached by brothers. There was McKenzie brothers. One of them coached Wairarapa. One of them coached Hawks Bay. And the referee was also one of the brothers, the McKenzie brothers. So it was plenty of uh, intrigue in it. And the Wairarapa team around about that time had something like 11 All Blacks. So compare them to, say, Auckland in the 80s. It just shows you how good rugby was in those days around this region. Yeah, thanks, Coggy. That's uh, absolutely epic. And, and good luck, Wild Bush, for this weekend. And we're going to cross the Mark Rudney shortly. Um, and we're going to go over the Wild Bush side that was just named on Thursday. And But the show is sponsored by Ziggy Stars. And Ziggy does so much for the uh, rugby community, Charlesy. Um, I know that he's, he's, uh, he wants his dollars to every rugby club every year. And Ziggy today has put up a 
hundred dollars for the pick the school competition, which is obviously the uh, White of Bush versus Hawks Bay game on Monday. Uh, now the pick the school competition has changed, however, to fifteen hundred, but that will be on the Ekaterina Greytown Lane Pen Cup final the following week. So thank you, Ziggy, for putting up five hundred dollars for this. Yeah, and Ziggy's got some amazing uh, sponsorship there, um, and we thank him very much for for what he's doing for all rugby clubs. Cool. Now um, let's go into let's let's quickly talk about last week's uh, last week's results in the Prem's competition, the Moose Company Cup. There was upsets galore, and Coggy put this in the paper. Um, Charlie, how did you go with your picks? Because I know I went zero from four, and it's the first time I've on the show. Uh, I was two and a half. Really, uh, but some some real upsets in that round. Coggy, can we just get your comments on on those some of those games, and, and perhaps you you name a few. Next to there for some teams, and, and yeah. you, were, you were bang on the money. Yeah, you were four from four. Yeah, the Pioneer saw Pioneer take on Marist, and uh, I thought Pioneer were very good considering they didn't have any ball in the first half in particular. But geez, they scored some good tries. It's a good game. Both teams are, yeah, you would have queried if uh, either team had won it, but yeah, Pioneer took their chances better than Marist in the end. And, uh, I know to, uh, to, uh, Peter Beach was pretty upset at the end, but uh, yeah, he, he gave credit to Pioneer because they did play a very good game. Yeah, thanks, Coggy. We're going to cover these games in a little bit more detail shortly. Now we're going straight into the Lone Star Legion of all Job. I'm going to let you cover this one. Yeah, the first week we put this up, we got some amazing nominees. And again, uh, these two people from the Pioneer Rugby Club, the Lone Star Legend of this week, Mr. Blue and Mrs. Blue. Round of applause. You all know who they are. They've been around the Pioneer Rugby Club for God knows how long. Oh my God, do they give back to that club? And they're outstanding people. So, Very Mr. Well and Mrs. Blue, you are the winners of the Lone Star Legends of the Week, and the voucher will be coming your way. Okay, oh, now we're going to go, uh, we're going to cover Facebook epic picks of the week, Charlesy. There were some really epic picks on Facebook. And uh, this one first, this little kid here playing for Maris called Sunshine. Let me zoom in here. Look at the determination on the face. Absolute determination that An absolute blinder. Well done, Sunshine. You've had a great game. Now, this kid here plays with Gladstone. Three years old, plays Ripper Rugby. Oh, three years old. Look at that full shot. The, the flying locks out the back going for it. Absolutely epic. Also, have a look at this one from Point here. Down the sideline, busting run. Letting oh, it up. Letting it up. Running good lines here. Yeah, awesome, awesome stuff. Now, this is my pick of the week. This is uh, and how happy are these two? This is the end of the match. All the glee on the sideline. Mr. Matthews, look how happy he is. What a daughter to have her uh, in her first season of rugby. So, a lot of, lot of Jay children playing rugby and, and some positive sidelines happening around the region from the parents. So, keep that up, parents. Positive sideline support. Okay, coaching 101 now with Charlesy Pusco. Charlesy, this is the uh, kid from uh, the end of the team side from Kurunui. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I noticed this photo, can you can just zoom out of it. Yeah. Uh, look, I looked at that photo, but what a technique he's got with his goal kicking. Uh, as you can see, a high a high left arm, a very well balanced right arm, his head's over the ball, and the placement of the left foot uh, parallel to the target. And you can tell he's going to have a good follow by that, because his chest is over the ball. That's the coaching one on one this week on the goal kicking, but he looks like a fantastic talent, Zach, about from the Newey Colts. Okay, now. Here's one for you. Here's what not to do. And uh, this is Peter Beach making a tackle against Pioneer. Now, kids, when you go into a tackle, don't put your head in front of the player because all that's going to happen is that player's going to fall on you and you're going to get a sore head. So when you make the tackle, go to the buttocks area. And then cheek to cheek. Cheek to cheek. And then just take the legs and take them down. But Peter Beach here. Now, I do know he did make the tackle, but he wouldn't feel good after this one. Well, look, Beachy, look, he's risking a broken jaw there, to be honest. A broken nose. Yes. By that, that tackle technique. It's pretty poor from a rec class. What do you call it, Charlie? <laughs> here we go. Okay, this one. Back, and this is going to be our try of the week. And this one, uh, John T. Miller taking the ball from a line out against Maris. Ran at least 30, 40 metres inside ball. Inside ball to hit me on it. And can you just see more on Peter Beach there? Can you just oh, go? Oh, no, I'll go back. I'll go back. Look at Beachy in the background. Just just zoom in. Look, he's actually heavy. I think he's heavy because <laughs> he doesn't have to tackle him. He's actually heavy there. As, as Pioneer then proceed up the field. And look at this. Under the six, Pioneer score. 
and that was almost the nail in the coffin from Aris there. So well done, Pioneer. Okay. This one, Shay O'Gorman sneaks his little mug around the corner. So, um, Shay says he's given the I think disastrous um, call from him. If you're listening, uh, look, you're one of the better referees in the region. I know you're the one up Bush team, but we need our referees on. Yeah, on come back, Shay. Come back, Shay. Come back. Okay. Yeah, come back, Shay. Come back, Shay. Yeah, maybe we, next we should get some banners and some things. banners and stuff. Yeah. So, what Bush secondary school rugby and talking about referees, James Goodyear was doing there Wednesday night, and he did an absolutely fantastic job refereeing the uh, Kurunui um, Makota game. But we're going to cross to Coggy. Coggy, can you tell us a little bit about the first 10 competition with uh, Waikon and Rathkill? Yeah, well, uh, Rath Keel, I'll start with them because they've had a couple of games since last week. Uh, uh, one of them Saturday, they went down to St. Peter's, Cambridge, 17-10. Pretty close performance there. Last minute try to St. Peter's uh, blew it out a little bit. Though uh, Rath Keel were only two points behind up to that stage. And then on Thursday, they went down to Fielding High School, who have got a pretty big reputation in uh, secondary school rugby throughout the country. They were leading 17-10 at half time, but finally went down 23-34. Uh, they take on Wanganui Collegiate uh, on Tuesday in the next game. White Cole went down to St. Pat's Silver Stream 19-12. They take on Wellington College, second 15 this afternoon at 1 o'clock. Uh, so good luck to the boys at White Cole. Yeah, thanks, Coggy. Now in the uh, local first 15, second 15 competition, uh, Rathkill got up 35-17 over a, a really solid White Cole second 15. And uh, Kurunui went to 40 14 uh, versus Makota College. Now we're up 14 0. Yeah, what happened? I'm not sure. I think um, you got to, you have to blame the coach, right? Well, you would. The half time speech must be terrible. Yeah. Well, anyway, 14. Anyway, good on good on Makota. They play really well. Now the player the uh, player of that tournament on the night of Wednesday, Tom Tomlinson from Rathkeel, the number 13. He scored himself three tries in that game against Wycombe Second. Well, Tom Tomlinson, we've got 10 CC on board this week. Uh, who've come to the party with sponsorship. For this competition, 20 meat pies uh, are going to be given away. Pies. 20 meat pies. Uh, if you get a meat pie, you, know, you get a voucher. So, Tom Tomlinson, three meat pies coming your way. Yep. We'll give the rest of them out next Wednesday night at the ground. Okay, let's go over our senior reserves game from last week in Chile. Um, let's go through it. Carleton, will they get up? Yeah, they did 32 28. I watched basically half of that game at Carleton. Very good game of rugby. I was most impressed with the standard. Out of, of that game, uh, Carterton just came home like a freight train and, and got the chocolate at the end. But the senior reserves competition is, is awesome this season, I think. It is. Yeah, it is. Really is some good rugby, but you know, that was a tight match. And this one, this one, Greytown versus Gladstone, yeah. 13 all. Yeah, Great yeah. Game. another fierce battle out there. Matty with the Papa Prowlers heading out to Gladstone, 13 all. Both teams probably felt they could have won that one. Two and only are looking good in this competition. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. My number one side, he's got Mary's 13 13. 13. Three, 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 three. Now there is one game this weekend um, for in the reserves competition. Booker Toy host Marston Marist, and that's our Booker Toy at two thirty. Well, a great trip there for the Marston Marist. Well, listen, get on the bus. Uh, you know, yeah. enjoy all the festivities you have out there, Puka Toy. But I'm picking Puka Toy for that one. Okay, now let's get into the Moose Company Cup games. A, a lot of banana skins, as uh, Chris Cockpit would say. In our first game, we've got another Pioneer 42, Paris 32. Coggy, you're at the game. Tell us a little bit about it. Uh, Himi Ona Hira, outstanding for Pioneer. I'm sure Mark Root and he's got his eye on him too because he forced a number of turnovers, scored a great try. Um, yeah, just fine here. Yeah, just too good. And hey, I think as uh, Mark Child said last week, it's not the first time that uh, uh, Marist have had a dose of pioneeritis, and they certainly got a good one on Saturday. I think you and Child have got some sort of love affair going here. But no, no, actually, anyway, I'm just making, I'm not a, stop it there. I'm there right. is actually a thing called pioneeritis. There is. It is a virus. Virus. Pioneeritis is out in force this season. But it's good to see. It's great to see. Um, okay, now Greytown get a massive win over Cardinal, forty-one to twenty-five. Charles, can you cover this for us? Well, yeah, it's a, it's a good performance from Greytown. Uh, took the game to Carlton early. 
with probably 20 odd phases, the first five minutes. Carlton got the lead 7 3. But I feel the Greytown team had, had fatigued the Carlton side by then and, and basically poured the points on. 15 minutes in the second half, it was, yeah. it was probably so. And Carlton showed their endeavour and they're, cool. they're a dangerous side um, to watch. But I feel the Greytown team had too much of the lead. Okay. An absolute bloodbath out of Gladstone, 41 to 3 over Martinborough. Coggy, do you know much about this game? Uh, just talking to Steve Thompson, he said they just finally clicked and they really started to control things. They did well out the back. Martin Barra, a bit below strength. Uh, the sad thing about this game, a rather unsavoury incident at the end of the game, and it's seen uh, the Martin Barra halfback, Chance Ropiha. He's been suspended for uh, 16 games, which will head into next season. He threatened the referee, Caleb Rowlands, after the game. Uh, we really don't want it in the game, do we? And we need to get it out. And uh, that sends a message to all players they're not going to tolerate any sort of threatening or abusive behaviour towards referees. Yeah, I yeah, agree, Coggy. Um, and it's you know I, I know Chance, and he'll be he'll be you know he'll be gutted. Um, and look, I, I feel we we all make mistakes in our life at times, and yeah. you know he did the moment, he did you know, and he he'll know. So I think you know he's he's going to serve his punishment. Uh, Chance, if you're listening, you know. Yeah, some good, yeah, he's got some really good people around and, and to support you, mate. You'll be back. But just learn from it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. To James Bruce, Bruce Lee said that they're going to be supporting him big time. So, uh, yeah, it's important that he, he learns from it and moves on. Yeah, cool. And obviously he's got a lot of support out there with the Barnabara Club. And I hope Marty bounce back after this because I, I, I enjoy it with Marty. Yeah, could galvanise Marty. I, I think, you know, they're going to cause some absolute problems for some teams. Okay, one game that I couldn't pick. Um, East Coast beat Ekinahuna 17-14. I was way off, Chodzi. This all week I was way well, off. Well, look, I, I feel in this game, we, we picked it last week, Coggy, you know, Coasties are a difficult side to play. They play a bit of a different style on the clever side, well coached. They've got some really good players. Uh, Tom Broughton is a fantastic player exponent. He would have, uh, on bowl account, I did hear dominate the lineouts. Um, I heard he figured out after about three lineouts up there. So uh, with position and, and their tails up, the Coasties are a hard team to bowl. And they can you know, change their team maybe around a little bit, at the, you know, with the selections and whatnot. But um, and I can see why the Coasties would have done Look, you can underestimate East Coast. They, if you underestimate East Coast, they will hurt you big time. So they're in it, they're in it. And let's make the position so great. Okay, next weekend we're going to go, next week we're going to go over the tables for the competition. But we're going to get straight into the Barriers Wild Bush. Versus Hawks Bay. Now, Mark, we've got Mark Rudy on the line. And he's itching to have a chat. Mark, welcome to the show. Hey, Charlie. Hey, Chris Coggy, how's it going? Good, bro. Okay. Hey, just to be fair to Coggy, obviously Coggy wasn't at the 1927 game because he was only two at this stage, but um, we're looking forward to uh, this weekend and, and hopefully we can reenact what Coggy missed out on in 1927. <laughs> yeah, uh, Thanks, Mark. I really appreciate the lovely comments. <laughs> look, look, Mark. I don't think there'll be ten thousand people at the ground, but we hope there's a big crowd to support the team and the squad. Uh, just want to get your opinion on what you've seen so far in local club rugby and and what's happening uh, from your opinion with the standard of play. Yeah, look, I've been I've been away off the club scene for two or three years, and coming back last year and this year, especially. Uh, there's a lot of exciting talent around, and each team's probably got three or four rep players, you know, guys that are rep standard in their squad, so there's a lot of depth around the, the squads. I'm seeing quite a bit of exciting new talent in some of these young fellas. So, you know, we had a we had a hard time picking the rep team for this one-off game against Hawke's Bay, which is good, I think. You know, we had about 30-odd players that uh, were available, and we had half a dozen that weren't, so... I think the depth's here, eh? Just trying to get them more on paper onto onto a field now. Yeah, I agree. And and I think there's a lot of depth in club rugby this season. And it bodes well for Wadalaka Bush in the Heartland Championship. I feel yourself and your selectors will be able to, to pick a really strong squad coming the end of the season. You know, let's hope there's, there's not too many major injuries. Uh, but you must be feeling pretty upbeat about what you've, what you've seen so far, Roots. Yeah, I am, Charles. I went to uh, Gladstone on Saturday for the first half and then down to Carterton for the second half. And I got down to Carterton and uh, the intensity was right up there. And, you know, both teams were going 10-plus phases. So 
recycling the ball, holding on to it, make some good decisions. So, yeah, I think the intensity is there. And, you know, with with some of those, uh, I don't know, uh, I suppose you could call them upsets on the weekend and Pioneer getting up again and, and East Coast, it's just going to make for a really good, you know, next four or five rounds as everyone's jostling for that top four. Yeah, Mark, um, looking at the side, you've got four debutants making their uh, starting starting career with White Upper Bush. Uh, tell us about those yeah. four players. Well, uh, we have got uh, three in the backs. Uh, Isaiah, Asiri, oh, actually, we've got, oh, we've got Jake in the forwards. Um, so, yeah, two two young boys from Carleton. Um, Isaiah's come down from Auckland Grammar. He played first 15 there. And Asiri, he's been over studying, but he was uh, Kurunui first 15 a couple of years ago. Jake's come from Wellington Club Rugby. And just trying to think, oh, just trying to think, who's the other one in there? Um, oh, Vesey. Well, Vesey, he played for Mid Canterbury about 10 years ago. He's also played, um, he was in the World Cup for the New Zealand Defence Force team about three years ago. So he's he's had a, quite a long career, Vesey. He's about early 30s, I think. So he's got quite a bit of experience to bring. Coggy, if you have any questions for Mark, I know you guys have been chatting a little bit about this. I'll let you two have a chat. Yeah, Mark, um, you know, what are your sort of ambitions that you want to get out of this game? Oh, for me, Coggy, it's really to see how uh, these players go at a higher level. Um, you know, there's going to be less time and space and just to see how they react. We've, uh, we're looking for a lot of communication. We've got, a, you know, two or three young fellas in the back line. So we really want them all to stand up and talk and make sure they're making good decisions. Um, so trying to move it away from... Yeah, nine and ten making all the decisions so that everyone can help. Um, yeah, we've had uh, wait, um, we had uh, three backs pull out on Tuesday because of injury, so we've had a little bit of disruption with five of the starting, well, five of the backs out now that were originally named. So there's a chance for some new guys to come in, but and I suppose the score is secondary to just to really for the performance and for those guys to show us they can handle the pace and intensity. It's just a bit of a higher level. So that's what I'm looking to get out of it, just to see the ones that can. Yeah, good I'm quite Chris. intrigued, Mark, to ask you, um, what's your thoughts around this? Uh, what's your, your thinking around the uh, Sam Morris and Tiffany Hyra having the two playmakers at uh, 10 and 12? Oh, well, Tip's played, you know, he's played it quite a bit at 7, 5, 8. He gives us another option there. And, and the rugby I've seen Tippy playing this year, he's probably playing his best rugby. He's making some really good decisions. So... It just gives us that two-pronged uh, decision making there around it, and you know we've got we've got some young guys out wide. So with those two there, hopefully they can they can make some good decisions. And Nikora Iwi's playing good rugby at centre as well. Yeah, Ruth. So I want to just mention the the depth and the forward play in Wada Bush Club Rugby this season. I feel we, you've if everyone's available, it could be a a pretty awesome forward pack you'll put together for the Heartland Championship. Can you Great. just comment a bit on that? Yeah, you know, you look at, at what we've got there, Chelsea, and, and we had Sam Gammy was unavailable, Tavita was unavailable, Tulu's unavailable for this game, Tom Broughton was unavailable, Chris Hemi was unavailable. So, you know, you put all those, those names in there too, it's going to be a tough, uh, oh, actually, and, and James Puckleton's not back playing yet, so it's going to be a tough 22, 24-man squad to pick at the end of the year. And that's great to hear, Roots, that you've got those options. And look, everyone's excited about the Heartland Championship coming up. But if you're listening, get to the ground on Monday, 2 p.m. Let's uh, maybe relive the Battle of Solway in 1927. Yes, yes, let's get, let's get some passion in there. Bush Bush. Team. And look, I think, what are the Bush players, if you're listening, you got to take it to them early. You've got to get in there and you've got to show those Hawks Bay guys, you know, they'll be well structured, have their play. Just go and nail them in the first That's day. That's it. And I'm going you know, to get down there and support. I'm taking the Kurunui uh, Press of Dean down there, and we've got Domino's pizzas and everything organised. We're going to go and support Beeching, and, and congratulations, Beeching, on making co captain of the Wider Bush side as well. Just need to oh, just on that, Anton. Just on What's that, he that? may be a late replacement. Beachy may be a late replacement after that tackle technique I, I saw before, so we'll have to yeah. sort that out of training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, t- I, t- I totally agree, mate. Maybe do, uh, yeah, work on that uh, before the game, before Monday. But I'll have a chat with you. Yeah, there's, there's a question mark over him, obviously. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay. Cheek now, to cheek. <laughs> cheek to cheek, BG. Yeah, cheek to cheek. <laughs> okay, now, this is the Pick the School competition sponsored by Ziggy's Glass. So there's $500 up for grabs. You guys know the rules. Comments below. Um, it's the first one to pick the, pick the score. There's no super overs. There's no split prizes. So get in there. It's 500 bucks to win. Speaking of super overs, Coggy, yes. look, we'll cut to cricket. Devin Conway, his first bat for New Zealand Lords, his test debut. He got a century. I, I'd go. Let's poke, poke some cricket with Coggy. Yeah. What do you reckon, Coggy? Conway was a, a, incredible last night. How good is he, Childsy? He's just he just looked at ease right from the first ball, didn't he? <laughs> uh, what well, the highest ever score uh, for a debut at Lords? Uh, you can't you can't say any more. I think the guy's going to be a superstar for the future for us. Absolutely, turning thirty shortly, and uh, he'll play another five six seasons for the Black Caps. Can't wait to see what that guy does. Oh, I can't, for the rugby. Oh no no, I can't wait for the Test World Cup to start. Well, what is the date, Coggy, on the Test World Cup to start? Because there's going to be some really late nights for all of us, right? There will be. I think it's about two weeks away, isn't it? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, right in the middle of club rugby season, but go the Black Caps. Okay, fantastic. Now we're going to finish up the show with, and thank you very much, Mark Rudney, for coming on, and and good luck on Monday. Thanks, boys. Uh, thanks, Coggy, for coming on. You're always, uh, yeah. Well, he brings up uh, bloody, <laughs> bloody show, doesn't he? He does, he does. Oh. But, but he sort of, you guys have got this little thing going. But anyway, talk about what 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 you have for your mates, you and Coggy. Tell us a little bit about what about well, you, Coggy. We have a quiet beer together occasionally. We, we talk, we talk sport. Look, what the what about you campaign is all about looking after your mates and not drinking, not binge drinking, not going over the top. If you see your mate at the pub and he's had enough. You got to get look him out of there. Get them out of there. Like guys that are drunk, they don't know what they're doing. It's up to you, as you, his mate, to go and grab him and make him safe. That's all I'll say this week. That's it. And it's a long weekend, so be safe on the roads. Go and enjoy the rugby. The, what, what games are there? So go and support Warwick. Up bush. the bush. Up the bush. Up the bush. Thanks for watching the show. We'll see you next week. And next week we have the uh, Lane Pen Cup final coming up too. Ekaterhuna versus Greytown. $1,500 so, up for grabs. Give us here for uh, someone. To pick but look, pick a score. Jackpot next week to $1,500. Make sure you tune into the show and make your selections. Be a great, great day down there at Greytown. Thanks for watching, guys. Got up.